It seems that Walnut relates much better to people than she does cranes. I took care of her every day, five days a week. But over time, as she became more familiar with me, she'd dance more and do more courtship, and I would try and return it. And over time, we became very well bonded. White-nape cranes are an endangered species native to Asia. They number less than 5,000 in the wild. They breed in China, Mongolia, and Russia. Our goal with the white-nape cranes is to help build up the captive population as an insurance in case the wild population is lost. I've been working with a female named Walnut for the last 12 years. Walnut was hand-raised by people at another institution, so she bonded or imprinted on people. Cranes should be breeding at two or three years of age, but Walnut hadn't produced any offspring because she was imprinted and didn't get along well with other cranes. So she was sent to us at age 24 as the most genetically valuable crane in captivity because her genes had not been passed on. I check in on Walnut throughout the day. She always greets me by dancing and I try and return the favor. Just spending time with her seems to make her happy. Cranes have a wide variety of vocalizations, including the unison call. That's something that pairs do to advertise their territory. The male and female will both call at the same time. <laughs> Walnut and I try and do the unison call. I don't sound quite as good as she does. I bring her nesting material. I'll gather grass and hay and small sticks and bring them to her. Um, she never likes where I put it, but she likes that I brought her something. Walden and I are paired to make artificial insemination easier. Normally it's very stressful and even dangerous to be grabbing a crane. So by being paired with Walden, I can do artificial insemination by myself without any stress, without any capture, which actually improves the efficiency and the effectiveness of the procedure. Walnut has had six chicks so far, and she's laid two eggs this year, so we're hoping to have two more chicks hatch in the next few weeks. The expertise we have here at SCBI in breeding endangered species allows us to learn a lot about them and to find all sorts of creative ways to help them breed and help conserve some of the rarest birds on Earth. See, he's in that box. I'll lift up the lid. Everything about the North Island brown kiwi is bizarre in the bird world. They're very enigmatic and shy. They are nocturnal. They burrow. They can't fly. They have poor eyesight, remarkable sense of smell. Everything about them is different. Kiwi have a wild population estimated at about 25,000, and that number declines by 2.5% annually. They are native to New Zealand and sacred to the Maori people. We send off back to New Zealand all of the kiwi feathers that we have collected for the Maori people to use. We at the zoo in 1975 were the first to hatch a kiwi chick outside of New Zealand, and we didn't hatch another one until decades later. This spring, we're expecting two kiwi chicks. The chick that just hatched was the first kiwi that we've ever had here that was uh, parented, laid, and hatched here. It's two days old now. It's good. Okay. Sure. What's the weight? 315.5. OK. You lost about 10 grams. Right, that's normal. So we're removing the chick from the incubator now because the second egg is ready to be moved into the incubator. We pull the egg from the male, which is the parent, which incubates the egg, just to keep an eye on it, make sure everything's going OK, and, and we can assist if we have to. The kiwi egg is very large. It is about 20% of the female's body weight. The second egg is on day 50. Expected hatch date is 78 days, but it could hatch any time in that span. You ready, Candle? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's take a look. So we can want to make sure it's still viable, which it is. 
So this clear part you see in the egg is the air cell. You're looking for vessels. Um, later on, we can see movement. You can mark in the air cell as the egg develops, and that way you can mark progress. As it develops, the air cell will get larger, and so the egg will actually lose weight. Okay. That's good stone. So we hope that in a few weeks we'll have a second chick. Our goal is to help the populations of these birds, whether it's a kiwi or a crane, they're all endangered, and so we're trying to conserve the species as best we can. The most rewarding part of the job is when we have chicks exactly this time of year, so we know that our efforts have been successful.